All right, so I left off the last video just starting this Roman portrait template. You just take an egg shape. This is viewing a, a person from the front that's made of a circular cranium and a mandible. It's like a mask-shaped oval that you extend downward. And then you split it in half both, both ways, kind of crosshairs. This middle line is the eye line. And then you do five equal distances across the eye line. And it's easiest to start from the middle, like kind of guess what an eye width would be a little bit from each side of that center line and then extend that distance out twice on each side. And that's basically where eyes go, where there's one eye width in between. clean it up a little bit for you. Now, all the Roman face template gives you or portrait template gives you is where all these structures go. So the eye, I'm going to do a really quick drawing of C-3PO. Because the eyeball sits in this width and is centered at this place in the skull. So now if I draw it, I'll draw it with red here, magenta. If I do a perfect circle now in those, I get C-3PO. And why is C-3PO designed that way for Star Wars? It's because that kind of symbolizes every expression possible. <laughs> now what are we missing? The fact is the eyes are not perfect circles. That's the eyeball in the head. The eye is dictated by the upper and lower eyelids, and they're usually a little bit more almond or oval shaped. But we now know where they go. And you'll see she, that Ruth Bader Ginsburg has one eye width between her eyes, like all human people. If I then take the inside of the nose, or I'm sorry, the inside of the eye line and extend that line down, I get the width of the nasal cavity in the skull. And then if I split the space between the eye line and the base of the mandible in half, I get the nose line. So that's the bottom of where the nose would be, halfway from here to here. Now the nose, you can have an upturned nose, a downturned nose. Ruth Bader Ginsburg has a slight downturned nose. That means that her nostrils fit right in between this rect or in this rectangle, right? Right underneath her eyes. And then the ball of her nose, which is unique to her, that's all cartilage, kind of looks like this. So that's fitting Ruth Bader Ginsburg's eyes and nose into this face template. Next, we can go to the top half of the head. And instead of dividing it in half, we're going to divide it in thirds. And that top line, this is a default hairline. Because, of course, people's hairlines recede. But RGB has a pretty strong hairline that hasn't receded very much and seems to touch that area. But it's a little lopsided, so it's a little bit higher on the right side than on the left side, at least in that photo. And then the hairline also defines the shape of the forehead, and hers is kind of squared off as it goes down to the eye line. Like so. Okay. Now, the beneath the nose... Traditionally, you split this space into thirds. So one, two, three. And that top line is the mouth line. That shows the separation between the lips. And the bottom line is the chin line. So you can see the mouth line there, the chin line there. Now what's interesting is RGB actually has kind of upturned nostrils. So her nostrils are up here but the point of her nose is lower, and it gives the illusion of more space for her upper lip. But her mouth line is still right where the Romans say it should be. 
Now, how wide is the mouth line? This is the trickiest thing for students to get, so I'm going to do it in bright yellow. You do a little dot right in the middle of your face, right at those crosshairs, and then you do a dot at the corner of the nostrils. And then you draw a straight line connecting those dots. Where that line intersects with the mouth line is the width of the mouth when relaxed. So now I can start actually putting some of these features in and placing it on the template. So the chin is just where the, the skin tacks back to the skull. The eyes kind of fit in here, da 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 da. The upper eyelid, the lower eyelid. This is just to really understand the basic proportions of your portrait subject matter. The nostrils are upturned, but they fit within that Roman rectangle. And then the lips, makeup is always helpful to see this, but they have distinct shapes. The upper lip versus the lower lip. She has a fairly thin lower lip, fairly squared off and thin. And then the ears fit between the eye line and the nose line traditionally, but she is old enough that it actually extends a little bit above it and a little bit below it because our ears continue to grow. Just like our nose, noses continue to grow out. And then eyebrows obviously go above the eye, but they're not based on bone, so they're subjective. Well, some people have no eyebrows. Some people have a full canopy of eyebrows. And then the cranium shape, this is the last thing. Craniums are not a perfect circle. They're kind of oblong. And that can be reflected in the hair that softens the cranium. And then jaws on our, our the mandible, the jaw is not always perfectly smooth. You can have gels, you can have slight distinctions to your face, your cheekbones can be more or less prominent with the zygomatic arch, hers are very prominent. And so you can start to see then how you can get likeness. So this is the Roman portrait way of understanding Ruth Bader Ginsburg's likeness for sculpture, for painting. And then ears are maybe the most distinctive thing of all, where no one's ears even match each other, <laughs> much less match any kind of formulaic shape. So you really want to pay attention to things like ears. And then the neck flows from the bottom of the ear and then curves inward and then back outwards unless they're like a, a gladiator or something that's really built up their neck muscles, then it might bend outwards. Then the length of the neck is fairly subjective because it's based on posture. But this would be my portrait of Ruth Bader Ginsburg from the front. And so understanding that will help me paint her from a different angle as well. Because I can basically take that standard Roman portrait and I can warp it. Option Command T. And I can just kind of push. She's in a three quarter view, right? And I can't change that completely, but you'll see how all the structures kind of move together. So if I want to make a caricature of her, I could give her like a light bulb sized head, shaped head, but you see everything's still proportional because I've understand the, the relationship between these things. Same thing with liberties I can take with my painted portrait. So let's continue that painted portrait. 
giving the base colors, getting them filled in, and not being afraid of pretty strong color choices, right? Filling in that gray. I'll put in a darkest dark somewhere that could be pretty close to black. Stole that from, from here. And I'll put in a bright white somewhere that's pretty close to white just so I have those tones on my gray background to react to so that I don't get stuck in the middle values, right? like highlights in the eye. But most of the time I'm using what are called chromatic grays, kind of mixtures of these things. Now this is still base color, so I have to resist the urge to do a lot of detail. And even though we think of the whites of the eyes as being white, if you actually sample their color, they're in pretty deep shadow most of the time. So the whites of the eye are, are not very white. The reflections in the eye can be quite a bit brighter. Now, even though the tools are simple for digital painting, the techniques are not. It takes a lot of time and practice to kind of build comfort, just like with traditional painting, with seeing value through color. Because each color I choose is not just the color, it's also the light or darkness of it. And so using those in ways that help make the illusion of three dimensions possible takes time and practice and can't always just easily be stolen from source material. But that's why we're learning and practicing. And if you find it enjoyable, you're going to learn it more just by doing it more. And it will help you with traditional painting as well, this kind of observation. So now that I've done that Roman portrait, kind of template as kind of an additional step. I know now more about how her nose is constructed. I paid attention to it. And now I can kind of turn that in three-dimensional space. She has higher nostrils. Right? It's not really a downturn nose. It's just her nostrils are kind of pitched upward a little bit, which is also why what we call frown lines or smile lines are a little bit more of a coat hanger for her than a straight line. And I know her mouth takes place in here. I'm just kind of roughing it in. On the off chance that any friends or family of Ruth Bader Ginsburg see this video, I apologize for making her look so clownish in these early steps. I am a fan. I like to make my, my base painting pretty messy because it gives me a reason. It spurs me to kind of clean it up later. <laughs> yeah. like I'll need to, to work on all of this in the refined painting. And eyes are not perfectly circular either. Even pupils are not perfectly circular. So you just kind of go with what makes sense and what looks right for what you're doing. 